We continue with you with another great prophet. This prophet is the prophet of the tribe of Thamud. His name is Prophet Saleh. And Saleh alayhi salam is an Arab prophet. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he said, four prophets and messengers are Arab. Hud, Saleh, Shu'aib, and your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed the tribe of Ad, after them, the tribe of Thamud will come. And the tribe of Thamud is one of the offsprings of the tribe of Ad. They migrated towards the northwest of the Arabian Peninsula, 380 kilometers northwest of Al Madina Al Munawwara, towards Jordan, in a city called Al Hijr. The people that came after Ad went back to the worship of one God, because they were believers, but they died out and they had children. And the shaitan came again and he gave them ideas and the desires began to play again. The temptations began to play again and people went back, subhanAllah, to worshipping different types of idols. But this time, the type of idol that the people of Thamud were following weren't only statues. They did follow statues, subhanAllah, but they had an associate idol and that was themselves. They governed. What happens and they governed what doesn't happen. They governed what's right and they governed what's wrong. And they made themselves gods. As for the belief of statues was just something symbolic, a belief, individual belief, which they found their forefathers on. It had not much meaning, but just as, you know, something, an identity to hold on. False or right, they didn't really care. What they really cared about was their advanced technology as well. They had learned from Ad that they once had ancestors that were advanced in technology. There's nothing wrong with being advanced in technology, but you use the advancement in technologies for good, not for wrong. And you do not take pride in the sense that now you see yourself superior to everyone else. This is the wrong thing about it. And you don't let it overtake your worship and your purpose in life and make it your main aim and objective. It's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us from becoming. So the people of Thamud worship themselves a little bit more than worshiping their idols. They were even more advanced in their technology than their former cousins Ad. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them in the Quran and relate the mention of Thamud, who used to bring the huge rocks and stones from beneath deep valleys. In another verse of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you carved into mountains homes and palaces. This is their advanced technology. They used to carve inside of mountains and they would carve with their tools rooms and corridors and buildings and stories and beautiful features inside of rocky mountains and they allowed air and light to come in spontaneously and also in an orderly fashion how did they do that how did they bring huge stones the size of hills from beneath valleys? And how did they actually carve into mountains palaces that they lived in, allowing light to penetrate and air to penetrate everything? This was their advanced technology. This got to their heads. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had bestowed upon the tribe of Thabud the way he had bestowed upon the tribe of Ad. He had given him so much given him wealth, given him health, given him strength, given him knowledge, given him a lot of understanding in life, palaces and lands of many fruits and farms and everything they asked for. They were physically strong, so strong, so powerful, they built palaces from mountains. And they used to live the same as Ad. They used to live on a flat surface land and they used to build palaces in the mountains just for the sake of it. For the sake of fun, they've got so much wealth, they've got so much uh, strength, they've got so much respect, and they were the people who ruled at that time the way Ad did. At the time of Ad, no one will ever face Ad. They were too strong and powerful for any other nation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also made Thamud the same thing. In fact, Thamud, 
you can still see their carved out palaces and castles and homes inside of cliffs and mountains. They are there. And Rasulullah has been there and so have some of his companions. And the story is related to us, inshallah, we will get to the end of it, what the Prophet said. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to send to them from amongst them a man. What type of a man? A man who was also from a wealthy family. A man who was also from a very well looked up to family. Not just an ordinary person from the low caste of people. No, a person who had very high standing in society and community. So much so that he was a man whom they were preparing in order to appoint as their leader. They wanted to appoint him as their leader because he was one of the most intelligent from amongst them. Salih alayhi salatu wasalam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the people of Tamud, we sent to them their brother Salih. May Allah's peace be upon him. What is meant by their brother? It means he was from amongst them. He says, oh, my people worship Allah alone. You do not have anyone worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, this is the same message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent with every single messenger. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Saleh told his people, look at the gifts of Allah upon you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established you on earth and he has granted you growth on this earth. So seek forgiveness to Allah and return to him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your call. Allah is indeed very near and he will respond. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, their brother Saleh told them, are you not going to be fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Don't you fear a punishment that will come to you? I have been sent as an honest and trustworthy messenger unto you. So fear Allah, fear your maker and follow what I have to say because I have his message. I am not asking from you any cent, nothing, no recompense at all. My reward will be with Allah. And Saleh alayhi salam was a very well respected wise man before the prophecy. They used to respect him so much. They know who he is, his background, his family. So Saleh was one of the noble people among the tribe of Samud. And they used to respect him so much that when they used to have problems within each other, they used to go back to him. He used to be like the man where people turn back to, ask, consult. If there's a conflict with each other, they go to him. If they are confused in any matter, they go to him. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him for this great job. When he, alayhi salam, started to call him to Allah and to worship no one but Allah, they said, O oh Salih, you used to be a respected, honorable person among us. What happened to you? In other words, what happened to you? Why did you go crazy all of a sudden? Same thing with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before the prophecy, they call him a sadiq, al amin. No one is more trustworthy than Muhammad. No one is more honest than Muhammad. No one is more respected than Muhammad. When Muhammad came to them and said, worship no one but Allah, they said, you're no longer trustworthy and you're no longer honest. We used to have so much hopes in you, O Salih, before this. Now, what happened to you? You are coming with a new call that we haven't heard from our own fathers. What's this new thing that you're coming? Are you trying to tell us that my father was on the wrong path? Are you trying to tell me my grandfather was on the wrong path? That's how they used to take it. Do you want us to stop worshipping what our parents are worshipping? And we have severe doubt about these things that you're asking us to do. He reminded them, Oh my people, Remember that Allah has made you successors after the people of Ad whom he destroyed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you so much that he has given you abodes on this earth such that you have built your castles in the valleys. And on top of that, you have these resorts or these huge palaces that are made of rock on the tops of the mountains. So my people, Remember, turn to Allah. What he did to Ad, it is not impossible that he can do it to you. They start to turn against him and make everyone else turn against him. And not only this, they even start to mock him. I think we've heard that many times, how a lot of times when the prophet and the messenger will come and call his people, his people will turn against him and start mocking him. 
We heard that with Nuh alayhi salam. We heard that with Hud alayhi salam. And again we heard that with Salih. And we'll continue hearing that till Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And you'll continue hearing that with everyone that follows the path of the prophets and the messengers. When you call to Allah, people mock you and make fun of you. When you become religious, people start saying, this person is becoming a bit crazy. So they said, what guarantee do you give us that you are calling for the right thing? Maybe you are from among those who work with magic. You're a magician. You are from those who either works with magic or a magician has thrown a spell on you. So either way, you're either a magician or someone who's got magic on him or has got spell on him. There were some people who started listening to him. Few people started listening to him and he started having a following. But who were they who followed him? The poor. So then they told him, a man just like us, one of us, we should follow him. No, this is a human being like us. What's the difference between us and him? And then they told him, out of all people, Allah could have not chosen except you. Why isn't it me? Why isn't it him? Why isn't it the leader Fulan? Why isn't it that rich person? Out of all people, you? And that's the same thing that told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hey, sorry to interrupt. If you like our work, then please like and subscribe. Salih alayhi salam says, Oh my people, do you think that you're going to be left very safe and secure in your condition? He says, you're living and Allah had blessed you with abundant water and then also plants and animals and fruits, delicious, easy to eat fruits. And you're carving out of mountains with a lot of skill, homes and palaces. See what Allah has taught you. So just fear Allah in return of what Allah had given you and obey Him. Do not follow those who are corrupt, those who only want to cause conflict and corruption on earth and they don't want to fix anything. Do you think you are going to be secure in this from the one who has given it to you? And they were very happy. They said, yes, we will be very secure. Nobody can harm us. Who can harm us? They told him, oh Saleh, why should we follow you? You must follow us. Leave your ways and come back to our ways and you see how you will be successful. So they told him then, since you claim you're a prophet, show us a miracle. So Salih said, I'll get you. What do you want? They said, okay, we want out of this rock, and they had a massive rock. Out of this rock, we want a she camel to come out. So another one said, no, but not that's not it. We want the she camel to come out 10 months pregnant. So another one said, that's not it. But we want the she camel so big and gigantic that we've never seen before. And then another one popped up and said, uh, we want the she camel to be red color with a lot of wool on her. Another one said, uh, we want the she camel that she could drink the whole water of the valley. And then another one said, we want the she camel to give us enough milk for the whole town. And one describing from here, another one describing from there. And they thought they just, you know, just a gathering of making fun of Saleh alayhi salam, coming up with something that no one could even think of and bring. So Saleh alayhi salam said, you finished? He said, yes. Saleh alayhi salam said, and if I bring it, would you believe in me? So they said, yes, of course. They thought that he can't. And Saleh said, but otherwise if you don't, you know Allah azza wa jalla can't punish you. And they said, no, we'll believe in you. So Salih alayhi salam said, then let it be. And one day they agreed, where everyone all came together, and all standing in front of the rock that they pointed at. And Salih asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take out that shikam with the way they described it. And then the land will shake, and Allah azza wa jal will make that shikam with all those descriptions that these people described and mentioned and asked for to come out of that rock in the presence of all the people in that town. They saw it with their own eyes. The rock split, they watch it. A camel came out of it, they're looking at it. Huge, big, massive, the biggest camel ever to be created. There, rich red in color, pregnant. They're looking at it. The community was split into two, divided. The majority of them just kept looking. What would they say now? 
They say, look, this is magic. But what happened? Some of the people started accepting. Said, no, we believe you are the messenger. Allah is one. We don't want to worship anything besides Allah. So it started working. Community divided into two. The numbers started increasing. When I saw this before their eyes, the messenger السلام, who, uh, Salih, said to them, this is the she camel of Allah. It doesn't belong to anyone. It's not born from any other camel. It's Allah's camel. This is the she camel of Allah for you as a sign, as you have asked. You have to now leave it. God has made a condition. You're not allowed to harm it. You're not allowed to touch it. And you have to leave it to graze wherever it wants. Also, since you asked for it to drink from your well, as you requested, you have to leave the well for one whole day. No one's allowed to touch the well. The she camel has to drink. And so the she camel drank for one whole day and it finished all the water. The next day, as the water built up, the village gets to drink. So one day she camel, one day the rest of the city. The she camel will live among the people of the town. He used to live on the mountain. The day where it's turned to drink from the water, come down. I will drink the whole water in the world. Enough for the whole town. And the next day, the people of the town will come and drink from the water. And that she camel used to give them enough milk for the whole town. And then that she camel gave birth and had another camel. So what happened? Those who became believers, their belief increased and the disbelievers, their disbelief increased. It is reported that because it was there every day for them to see, every day a few people were coming onto the right path because every day they're witnessing this camel. They're seeing it's huge, it's powerful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when we sent Salih to his people, to Thamud, with the message to worship Allah alone, behold, immediately they were divided into two groups, a group for and a group against. They were arguing with one another. They went up to the followers of Salih and they told him, Is it true you became from the followers of Salih? So they said, Yes. So the non-believers said, We deny what you believe in. We're not going to follow what you follow. And then they got together. And they realized, Looks like that Salih is getting more followers. This she came will turn out to be an advantage for him, disadvantage for us. We thought we were making fun of the guy, it turned out to be true. And what's this? We can't live with a camel that one day is a whole day for her, she drinks, and then the other day is for us. What's this? She camel, she comes out of nowhere and she takes a day out of our life. And the other thing is, we can't even graze our farms anymore. When this she camel walks, our cattle, our bulls, our cows, our camels all run away from her. What are we going to do? So they said, we're not going to accept that. Let's get together and destroy this she camel. And let whatever Salih says, let it happen. He's only someone who's got some <coughs> magic or spell on him or someone that's becoming insane. So they got together and they agreed to kill that shikam. They were known they used to get together, drink alcohol, cause corruption, and they used to be very well known, corrupt group of teenagers. So they got together and they agreed to kill that shikam. And after killing that shikam, kill the son or the daughter of that shikam. And then they plotted and they spoke to everyone in the town. If we kill that she camel, would you stand with us or against us? We stand by you. Went to another person, you stand with us or against us? We stand by you. They plotted and planned and plotted and planned and they went around and spoke to everyone, especially those who have influence in the city. We will be doing this. Are you going to stand with us or not? They said, we stand by you. So they went after getting the support of the people of the town. So it wasn't just them nine. They had the support of the people of the town. And news started spreading that people are deciding to kill the camel. So Salih alayhi salam warned them again. You dare touch the camel. If you touch the camel, there will be punishment coming. It will overtake you. So it was a huge camel. Even the people were slightly frightened, although they were huge themselves. So this one man goes to the front of it. He threw an arrow into the front leg of this camel. And the other man went in and he slit its muscle. And 
a few of them went in when it dropped and they killed it. They said they could hear its sound from the hills to the city. And then its baby began to cry and they also came to it and killed it. And after killing it, they start to slaughter it and start spreading the meat to everyone. And everyone ate from that she camel, except Saleh and his followers. Who heard Saleh alayhi salam? He ran to the city, he ran to the town, looking to stop these people. But unfortunately it was too late, people were sitting down, eating the meat of the camel. They said, oh Saleh, here is what we've done to this camel, now bring the punishment that you were promising us. So Saleh said, you have three days, enjoy the most out of those three days. This is a promise, there's no doubt in it. So they said, do what you want to do. Now they looked at their houses, they were happy. They said, what is Allah going to send to us? Floods, we have something so high, so strong. Can he send to us a wind? We have home made of rock and so on. They were so happy. These nine people got together. And what did they do? They swore an oath between the nine of them that tonight we want to kill Saleh and his whole family. And in the morning, we will tell everybody that we don't know anything. We will pretend like we are one of them. So Allah says, they planned their planning and we planned our planning. Take a look at what was the result of their own plot. They plotted the downfall of the one who was bringing them towards goodness. And Allah says, we in return destroyed them completely. And Salih alayhi salam was instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to leave the place. Because now the punishment was going to come. These people were happy they got rid of the man. The first day, Allah made the color of the faces of that town, all their faces was yellow. So they realized there's something coming. And the second day, all the faces of the people of that town became red. And the third day, their faces became dark and black. So they knew there's something coming. So they start to scream and cry. And what did they say? They said, these are days of bad omen. Three days passed. They still didn't see the punishment besides the fact that their faces were changing and they were crying and they knew something was happening. So they went into their dwellings, safe, secure, those rock homes. And they, they were now secure. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them something he's never sent before. They started hearing a sound. The sound became louder, louder, louder. Until each one of them were curled up because of the loudness of the sound. And the sound started shaking. Their whole community, the nation was shaking. Allah shook the ground under them. From the terror and the fear, they fell on their knees and they couldn't move. They became so terrified, horrified, so scared they couldn't move. They were so stiff and scared they couldn't move anymore. Then the thunder came while they are looking at it. And that sound resulted in their hearts dropping and they died on the spot with the sound. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, as they've never dwelt and flourished there, it's like they never existed there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them and destroyed them a severe punishment. After that is love that did not exist. How powerful were they? How strong were they? They were very powerful, very strong, very wealthy. But all this in front of Allah is nothing. It's only those who say, La ilaha illallah. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He saved Salih and those who followed him. When our order came and decree was issued, we saved Salih and those who believed with him. A mercy and a grace from us and from the disgraceful day of that day. And Salih alayhi salam walked away from the city of Thamud, broken heart and sad over his people. And he looked at his town and said, Oh my people, I had conveyed the message of Allah to you. And I advised, and I was a sincere advisor to you. You don't like the people who give you sincere advices. When Rasulullah passed through it, he found that there were people ahead of him, 
some Muslims. And he had told them what? He said, do not draw any water out of that well of Thamud. Do not drink from their water. They said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, but we took out some water. We made some dough out of it and we have it in our vessels. He said, as for the dough that you made, do not eat it. Feed it to your animals. The water, spill it. And only drink from the well that the camel used to drink from, not from the other wells. He says, do not enter their area unless you are crying, unless you will be harmed in the way that they were harmed or be punished the way that they were punished. Then the Prophet ﷺ took his clothes and he covered his head with it and he rode his camel and he rushed outside. He passed through it as quickly as possible. So it's not a place for you to go, you know, and take pictures and you know, take selfies and whatever. That's not a place for you to do so. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you're gonna go through it, if you have to go through it, be crying. You have to remember Allah's punishment. This is the place where people were punished. And any other place that you know, people were punished in it by Allah Azza wa Jal, you have to do the same thing. It's not a tourist attraction. You are allowed to go there to learn a lesson, nothing else.